uh, tried everything uh, in the book, uh, various catheters, cannulating catheters, guide wires, including a glide wire. Uh, we did a pre-cut. Um, we got bleeding uh, from the pre-cut, um, and we're not able to access her bile duct. She has a, a large mass in the head of the pancreas uh, that we FNA'd its uh, adenocarcinoma on uh, uh, our on-site uh, pathology review, um, and uh, it is unresectable. Uh, it uh, is encasing the portal vein. Uh, it's about four centimeters in size. Um, she also has a lesion uh, in segment six of her liver that we could not access that's probably metastatic that was seen on her CT scan. So we're going to uh, place a lumen opposing stent now uh, to drain her bile duct after our multiple attempts at um, at EOS have uh, at, I'm sorry at ERCP uh, have failed. Okay, so let's turn this on. All right, here's our bile duct. Here's the mass in the uh, pancreas. You can see the portal vein, the confluence, the SMA is below that. And we're going to place the Axios right about here. We're in the bulb. We're in the long position. So our orientation is uh, upstream. And then on the endoscopic view, you can see the bulb. I'm going to just pull back to the pylorus so you can see the landmark. So there's the apex of the bulb there. Here's the pylorus. So we'll push back through the bulb. We want to place the lumen opposing stent uh, as far towards the apex as possible. Um, I don't think she's a candidate for surgery uh, based on uh, the uh, two findings, the large size of the mass, encasement of the portal vein, and lesion in the uh, right lobe of the liver on segment six. However, um, if she did uh, undergo surgery, um, then uh, that would still be possible uh, by placing the lumen opposing stent towards the apex of the bulb. It would uh, not impair a Whipple operation. You don't want to place the stent too close to the pylorus if you're doing a pyloric sparing Whipple. All right, so we'll take off the uh, biopsy channel, uh, the valve, and we will advance the lumen opposing stent through the working channel. Okay, we're lure locking this. And let's take a look at the time. It is now uh, 10.07. And we're going to hook up our cautery. We're going to unlock the sheath. We're going to advance the sheath forward. And if we have some resistance, we'll straighten this out a little bit. We don't want to push against resistance. I do have a little bit of resistance, so I'll pull back just to straighten the tip so that the tip comes out smoothly. It's still not coming out yet, so I'll pull back into the stomach. And it's still hanging up on the elevator, uh, which we don't want. We don't want to push this against resistance. There we are. So now on the endoscopic view, you can see the tip of the catheter. And uh, I'm pulling back again into the working channel and then advancing out one more time. So we do have a little bit of step off here at the tip. There, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to pass through the pylorus. So you can see the micro ring uh, at the very tip. It's a little bright. Can you bring the brightness down for a moment? Maybe you can see the sheath is white, and that's why it whites out. But you can see a ring, a metal ring, at the very tip of this uh, tapered uh, bougie tip uh, or bougie end. All right, let's uh, bring up the light again so you can see that ring there. Now we're going to pass to the pylorus, and we'll get into the same position we were in before. Now with this... Uh, with the sheath introduced, uh, the scope's a little stiffer, so uh, we're having a little bit more difficulty popping through the pylorus. Maybe start from a little bit above. There we go. Now we're in the, uh, in the bulb, and we'll get our position again. There's the bile duct. Portal vein is below. 
Hold this position, please. We'll advance the sheath forward. There's the sheath. You can see it, it's very bright. Okay. Going to push a little bit further forward. Okay, so that it's really pushing up against the wall, and you can see that also on the endoscopic image view, how the tip of the sheath is pushing up against the wall. So the rest of this will all be EOS guided. We're using pure cutting current. We're checking our settings that we're on pure cut. We're going to advance the sheath uh, into the bile duct. We can very quickly measure the diameter of the duct, which is a little over two centimeters. This is a 10 millimeter lumen opposing stent. Okay, so we'll step on the cautery as we go in. We're inside now. I'm just gonna hold my position here. So I'm hitting up against the opposite wall. I'm going to now lock and I'm going to now deploy the distal flange. I've removed the safety pin, deploying the distal flange very slowly, pulling back, and you'll see the distal flange deploy. There it is, it's very bright. Now I'm gonna unlock the sheath. I'm gonna pull the bile duct up towards the wall a little more snugly now. Okay, it's nice and snug. Now I'm going to deploy the uh, proximal flange. Okay, I'm having a little difficulty with deploying the proximal flange. There it is, okay, it's deploying now. This will deploy inside of the working channel. I'm going to advance the sh flange forward. Let's switch to the endo large, please. So we have an EOS view, we now have an endo view. I'm pushing the proximal flange out and just pushing it out like this. Now it should be fully deployed. Let's take a look. And we should have bile now coming out. You can see the bile flowing right now. Go ahead and let's take out the... the delivery system. I'll just uh, continue to suck out bile. See the bile is freely flowing now. Okay, I'm just going to see if I can uh, empty as much of this as possible. And then on EOS, we should be able to see the stent as well. There's just a lot of air artifact right now. Okay, so now on EOS, you can see the distal flange inside of the bile duct. There it is, there's the bile duct here. There's the bile duct wall. You can see there's air inside of the bile duct. So flowing very nicely. So now we'll switch out for a, uh, a pediatric um, gastroscope. And just take, take, take a quick look in the, uh, inside of the lumen opposing stent. Uh, we're not gonna dilate the stent. It's gonna dilate on its own. Uh, we have good bile drainage. Uh, so we'll just let the lumen opposing stent dilate up on its own and, um, uh, and follow the patient's liver enzymes. But we'll just take one quick look with the uh, pediatric gastroscope just to confirm that we're in good position. We can also inject some dye through the, um, through the lumen opposing stent and complete our cholangiogram. Uh, which we were not able to obtain previously because of failed cannulation. So get some contrast ready, um, and we'll inject some contrast through the pediatric gastroscope. So it's now um, 10, uh, 13, and That means it took about 10 minutes to do this procedure. Okay, lights on please. There we go.
All right, here's the lumen opposing stent, and we'll position ourselves right at the opening here. And we bring up the light a little bit. We should be able to look a little bit through to the opposite wall. All right, so that's the wall of the bile duct that you're looking at. So let's inject some contrast through here, please. So we just hold the tip of the pediatric gastroscope against the opening. I need a big syringe, please, with more contrast than that. So we'll get our floral into position. So we don't have to do a cholangiogram, but I think it would be nice to just sort of confirm that we're uh, in good position uh, with our axios, so that everything's draining well, and that we don't have any obstruction further upstream. So there you can see the gastroscope in, in position through the axial stent, through the lumen opposing stent. All right, so now we're ready to inject the contrast and I'll hold the tip of the scope against the opening here so that we don't get too much flowing back. Start to inject, please. Okay, and as we inject, we're getting filling of the bile duct. Keep injecting and let's have some water now, please. So now we're getting the intrahepatic duct starting to fill. So you see the markedly dilated bile duct just as we saw on EUS previously. It was over two centimeters in size on EUS. There are the intrahepatic ducts, so we're getting good filling of the intrahepatic ducts. Here's our cholangiogram, looks beautiful. And now I'm just gonna aspirate the contrast and just confirm that we're getting good drainage through the lumen opposing stent. Okay, and so I'm just uh, aspirating the contrast back out. And then we'll step on the floral one more time and see if it's drained, it's drained beautifully. So this confirms we're in good position. There's um, uh, good drainage. Uh, this opening here is probably about uh, four millimeters. So that would be, you know, right now a 12 French uh, stent. And this is going to open up to a full 10 millimeters, of course, over the next few days. So we spent an hour trying to cannulate, gain access to the bile duct with ERCP. In the end, it failed, and it took us 10 minutes to place the lumen opposing stent uh, to drain the bile duct upstream from the mass and the pancreatic head.